Well, a new project today. This is a steering relay for my Rover P6. And I gotta tell you, I never even knew such a thing existed. So I found this one, and of course this one's broken. And it's for left hand steering, so rarer than hand teeth. You know, the only thing I could ever find is right hand drive, and there's a couple of people who say, you know, they'll rebuild it, but you gotta send it in, and they're in England, and so the car would be down for a couple of months. So we're gonna see what we can do with this. Uh, I've got absolutely no instructions other than how to get it out of the car, and, uh, you know, other than to say that it looks kind of like, in a sense, a pitman arm in an American car. And I'm just hoping that this doesn't push off too hard because I think you're going to have to remove this cover and then just press against this surface. Um, and I know I pulled the pitman arm in my Chevy pickup truck. It took about 18 tons and I really don't want to break this thing. So I will get started and we'll talk as I make progress. Well, we're off to a good start. This piece was here. Just used a big Stilson on it. Actually came apart quite easily. I was surprised. I was ready for a struggle. There's a rubber seal there. And then there's some sort of a plate here, which I'm going to take it back out of the vise and turn it upside down to get it out. So here's the plate. And as you can see, it's got an alignment notch. And these two devices, not quite sure what they're for, but this is the inside. And that is a wiper, because this is also a steering damper. And there's actually a tiny amount of oil left in this, but I expect that it should be full. And that's what that bolt hole is for, for is to put, I expect, 90 weight gear lube in there. So, take some more apart and see how it works. I put it in the press and gave it an easy push, and it didn't move. So I've scribed the line here and a mark there because this doesn't seem to have a keyway. You're going to need to get it back in the same position it was in because of that arm on the inside. So I'm going to apply a little heat here, and then I'm going to put it back in the press and see if I can get that to come. Well, that went better than I thought. Applied heat here with a small acetylene setup, uh, maybe a minute with a brazing tip and it moved still pushing hard but not that hard uh, so that arm is off now and this still needs to be finished being pushed out of here so I'll go do that. Well, here it is, this is that sweep these two black squares are actually just rubber strips and then there's a steel bushing inside of this aluminum casing that this rides in, and this had a few marks on it, so I've cleaned that up. And that goes back through there, and there's also a seal on the bottom, a rubber seal, but I just don't see a way to replace that because it's the aluminum is switched over it, so some of it's broken away there on the top half, but the bottom half is there. And frankly, this thing was empty to start with, and this car has power steering, so I don't really think that its function as a steering damper is really critical in this car. I think it's really more for the manual steering cars, because the power steering uh, box with so much hydraulic fluid in it and everything else is going to take away any road shock. So any of those bits go there, and then I think the way this works is the oil squeezed by, and there's holes underneath those square pieces. Here's a plunger that went down the center, down there, and then I'm running out of hands here. There's a spring that goes over that, and that stands proud at the top and bears against this plate. And I'm, like I say, I'm not quite sure. You can see that whatever these are, 
there's a hole there. They're, they're probably pressure valves to let the oil slide by as well. Uh, so I'm going to clean that up and then put that in. I would suggest that you fill this lower section with fluid before you finish assembling it. But again, I have got no instructions about how to do this. I'm just going by what I think is best. And it just seems to me that to try to fill it through that port from empty would be really long procedure because the oil has to sort of like drip down through these tiny little um, areas to get there. So that's my suggestion. I used Redline manual transmission lube which um, when it's cold is a lot thinner than uh, a lot less viscous than 85 weight gear oil is. Um, but then again I don't think it's really necessary on my car so I don't know I'm sure that I didn't look in the rover book but I'm going to bet that there's saying you should top this up with 90 weight and this one I'm going to bet never ever ever had been topped up which is why it was just there was a little bit of slurry in the bottom and that was about it so that's my guess what's best you take that with a grain of salt do what you think is best okay so I looked a little bit more there's little ball bearings there so they're one way valves sort of like in a fuel pump and I think these are just covers so this must be this is letting the fluid out of one side and then it just flows around I'm not sure in this but anyway this thing goes those bits facing down and you can see the notch there and then the notch right there you're going to make sure that you get that engaged properly like that and then here's the cap, and this rubber washer is uh, angled on the inside edge, so the angle goes towards the uh, cap side and the flat surface goes down. That essentially, if I cut through this, it would be a triangle, a right angle triangle. So then this goes back on here. You want to be really careful. It's easy to cross thread this thing, so you make sure you usually if you wind it back a little bit first till you feel it click. Well, make a liar of me. There, that seems to have gone now. That it should go pretty easy. And if it doesn't, stop and back up. Because if you cross thread this, you're going to, you know, just bugger it up bad and you'll be in a world of hurt. Okay. Now that this is reassembled, I've pulled that plug off and I'm going to top it off. I don't know if you notice on the underside of this cap this threaded hole extends beyond the cap so there's like a, a little air dome in here and I'm sure that that's purpose so I'm going to finish filling it up here make sure this level in the vise because it's way easier to get to it here than it is in the car because this sits under the power steering pump reservoir on uh, at least my car on car power steering so um, I'm going to do that and then we'll put the bottom back so I line my marks back up and this is going on really tight so I tapped it on to get it started and then I got this nut on without the washer right now and I'm turning the nut with a wrench but I'm also tapping it at the same time just gently because I don't want to put too much force on this thing and here it is all back together again so hope you enjoyed this it took probably about an hour to do all that um, mostly I thought that the bushing would have been worn to be honest but it wasn't uh, just had some scars on it from running dry so long to clean them up and I think it'll be okay so that's all for today don't forget to subscribe and to like at the bottom of the video and we'll see you next time